Welcome to Sailing Sertia. I'm Tegan. My parents sold our house, sold their business and bought a 38-foot island spirit catamaran with the goal to travel the world. Only problem is, it needed a complete refit. After three years, we are finally ready to set sail. This is Colbin, my husband. Karen, my mum. Denver, my brother. And Robin, my dad. Together we make up Sailing Sertia. I don't think there will ever be a time where a haul out won't absolutely petrify us. But the Peaks team really put our mind at ease. They're so professional, so helpful, and it just made the whole haul out a little bit less stressful. The whole team at Peaks makes the experience a lot easier. There is a diver that dives under the boat and he positions the straps for lifting. The line handlers when you're coming to the dock, everybody has their own job and they all do it amazingly. jobs whilst on the hard is to realign this rudder. For some reason the rudder is slightly off center. Everyone ready? Yeah. So we are taking it out. Not quite yeah. sure what the plan is, but it up and it and dropped yeah. it. One, two, three. Watch your toes. Okay. We noticed when we were coming into Trinidad waters, the current was coming past us side on and the rudder was shuddering. So we knew when we hauled out, it was going to be one of the jobs that we had to look at. I see there's a bit of wear on this thing. The steering system was adjusted a little bit that way, a little bit this way, and it was recentered. and then took the props off and made sure that there was no growth 
and also checked the anodes. We had a lot of build up above the waterline from sitting in the rivers in Brazil and also French Guiana and then when we got to Trinidad the Bay of Chagaramas is full of diesel which is the black that is on the outside of the hulls so it took a lot of scrubbing and a lot of elbow grease to get it off. It took about two days, two to three days to get just above the waterline cleaned off. One of the perks of being on the hard meant that we were closer to our yoga lessons with Hattie, a very, very dear friend of ours that we made while in Trinidad. You also can't beat this view for yoga. We then had to start with the fiberglass repair to the front of the bow after the jet ski accident. That is the main reason for our haul out, is to get that all done and painted and fixed and fed. So we put in total 10 layers of fiberglass on the crash site and then Colbin spent a lot of time fearing building the site up and then obviously painting. After getting above the waterline clean, we started focusing on the bottom hulls and the keels, making sure they were all sanded down and clean for our first layer of primer and then our new anti-fouling. <laughs> So I've just scrubbed half this pillow and it is so satisfying when you see the difference. You don't even really realize how filthy they are until you look close and it just seems like this fabric gets very moldy which it's meant to have an anti-mold thing covering, layering on it, but it doesn't help with sea air and the rest of it so we're getting a good scrub down. Then we have rain slowing the work down, if it's not other things going wrong. It's the rain, a bit of thunder. The boatyard here is chock-a-block full and apparently it's only at 80% of its capacity. Apparently they can also take up to 800 boats on the hard. And this is the quietest corner of the boatyard. Saoirse was looking spick and span and clean and fresh. So we marked off our new waterline, which was just slightly above the old one and got her ready for painting. We also had some of the inside paint inside the hull come loose when they were pressure cleaning the bottom of the boat so we have that to repair to. So it is utter chaos you can just see everything everywhere we are trying to get as much done as we can and we always try and do it as early as we can because there's always afternoon thunder showers there wasn't any for the first time yesterday so we got a lot done um sorry just dodging empty hatches so we got a lot done yesterday 
painting wires and everything. And today we are waiting for the thunderstorms that are predicted. So yeah, it's just a race against time and a race against the rain. So the stress is real. It is so hot. You can't even wear clothes. It's just, uh, it's crazy. It's the real feel is 38 degrees right now and it's 9.20 in the morning. It's just insane. It was unbelievable how close these boats get to other boats when they're being maneuvered around the yard. But everyone seems to know what they're doing, so you've got to have faith. started the black paint, our anti-foul, we did, we coated the uh, primer along the area that I mentioned before where we were raising our water line and now we've, so we're going to start with just doing a coat of paint around the water line first because you've got to build up the water line more than the rest of the boat so that's what Robin and Denver are working on at the moment. Once that's done we will start to paint the whole hull. Yeah, it's not actually that much. When you look no, at now it, that we've packed up the fiberglass. So yeah, there's not a lot up there. I'm not really going to go about this. Yeah, look at it. It's always here. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do was to start going like this. Yeah. And getting it. Feathering in the edges. Feathering it in. And then once you've got the edges feathered like that. Over this. Sorry. Are you over this? Very, very over this. And it's not like painting a house where you end up with a beautiful, smooth finish. With anti foul, you always have patches, patches everywhere. And it's so frustrating. You're not going to get away from it. So, how hot was it today, Mark? Get the delicious covers on the couch so we don't dirty anything. Because sweat everywhere. You can't sit down without everything ending up soaking wet and it's just gross that it's <laughs> liters and liters of sweat. I didn't know we could sweat as much. I said to Tegan, I wish we could quantify it because it would probably blow our minds. I'm sure we don't drink enough to make up for the sweat. Yeah. Feeling a little shattered. How many days have we been at this now? A week. We came oh. out, oh no, so six days. Tomorrow's, yeah, tomorrow's a week of just Non-stop. morning to night. And if it wasn't for the heat, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. The heat is just killing us. Robin and Denver have gone off to go and stand in the air-conditioned bathrooms and have a good shower. We'll be next after dinner. And then we add the heat of the stove to the inside of the cockpit, inside of the saloon. And it's amazing how much hotter that makes everything. So all in all, our life is just super hot right now. What are you mixing? The, mixing up the fairing agent. So it's the resin, the phenolic, micro balloons and some silica. took about three days of fairing and sanding and fairing and sanding and fairing and sanding but eventually Colvin got it there and got it 
almost perfect and then we could move on to painting. Okay, okay so we're here at the bar. Uh, this is where the jet ski hit us in French Guyana. And so the process has gone. We've put 10 layers of glass on the impact site and around the whole area. Uh, so that will give us structural you know, strength. And then what we've done is just started adding layer after layer of fairing and to get it really smooth and stuff has taken three days of fairing and sanding and fairing and sanding. It's nice here because you get a lot of, uh, you're able to get a lot more mixtures in per day because it's so hot, it's, so it's like 32 degrees. Within an hour your fairing is ready to sand, so I can do that three times a day basically. And uh, so yeah, three days it's taken us to get here pretty perfect there's a little there's a few little pit holes which I'm hoping the primer might cover but it's as good as we're gonna get it compared to what it was lots of work but he did it so this is the brain's trust. They think this will be easier to get the fuel up than the winch. But it's taken like 15 minutes to get it up onto the boat. In this heat, I'm sure they're regretting their decision now, but they don't want to look like turds. We've also had constant problems with our anchor light at the top of the mast, so we thought well, we aren't in Shagaramas Bay, which is just hell when you are on the boat because of all the wakes coming through. It was the perfect time to head up and figure out what the problem was. We also repainted the cockpit floors because the paint was peeling up, so we sanded back, primed and repainted. After 10 days of hard work, Sersha was back to her original glory, all fixed up and ready to go back in the water. Being on the hard was hard. <laughs> it was exhausting and it was hot. So it was a relief to know that Sersha was going to be back in the water with a bit more of a breeze and a little bit cooler. Thank you. 
for watching with us. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a like. And if you want to see future videos, please hit subscribe. Thank you.